comforting, and the topic is actually comforting is the humanism. So, without much further ado, give it up for Cody Wilson. Thank you. Can the people in the back hear me? I haven't, I haven't had time to test this. Everybody's good? Okay. I tend to talk quietly, so I mean, if, I need to know if you can't hear me. Or maybe it's better if you don't. Either way. Um, my name is Cody Wilson. I'm with a project that's really only, you know, like two months old, in essence. It's called Defense Distributed. It's just bizarre to be here talking with you about it because it hasn't even accomplished its goal yet. I'll, I figured we would accomplish our goal, which I will tell you, is the 3D printing uh, of a functional firearm. All right, Not just the, the printing of that firearm, but the distribution of that CAD file across the internet. Um, that might seem somewhat controversial. But I figured we would actually accomplish the goal first and then attract some attention, but I, I guess, like I said, I was so surprised the Bitcoin community, in essence, reached out to me, and I think I understand why that might be. Um, my apologies if, if what I do and what I represent evinces some hostility, um, but I'm going to try to explain why I think gun printing is ultimately, or the ideas represented by trying to print a gun are ultimately beneficial things. Um, but it won't be a full-throated defense, because I don't think ultimately we have to completely explain ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm sorry. I'm quiet. Is that better? Yeah. Thanks. It might be an ongoing issue. Okay, so uh, I guess about our project really quickly. Good, I have 20 minutes. We began online uh, a crowdfunding site, Indiegogo.com. It's like Kickstarter.com. Um, I'm sure you guys are aware of it and everything, even though you know it doesn't accept payment like Bitcoin. <laughs> For 22 days, we, we raise money, we run 4chan, we run... Damn, really, just that close, okay. Can I just... If I just shout, is it better? No, we need It's for the audio recording. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yes, uh, if we have to. I'm just not used to, like, you know, talking like this. Okay, Jesus. All right, guys, I'm gonna try this one more time. Is that good? Okay. We began on Indiegogo.com, a crowd a crowdfunding website. And for 22 days, we raised two thousand dollars, having almost no attention. We have a YouTube video and a little website, and that website was just a free WordPress theme that I kind of threw up there. It still is. I mean, it's completely inartful in so many ways. Um, there's nothing professional about it. You know, there was just three or four people handling the web stuff. And all, with almost, like I said, with almost no attention, we received $2,000. So I was like, wow, this is, there's a market for this. You know? um, then we got picked up by some gun blogs, et cetera, et cetera. Then we got picked up by Forbes magazine. Uh, and then all just kind of blew out of, out of control. So I haven't really slept since then. I'm uh, here right now. But interestingly enough, what happened was we, uh, as soon as we got pressed, we were pulled down from Indiegogo. They completely froze our campaign, um, refunded all the money, and we had a lot of press, but no money. And so at that point, we began raising money through Bitcoin. Uh, we, we offered, well, hey, you know, we're gonna, we'll raise money through the cryptocurrencies. You know, and you can send us money through our, our, our mailing address. And then we put a PayPal thing up because I didn't know what to do. You know? I mean, I, I'm not friendly to PayPal either, but. Uh, and in the 20 days after Indiegogo took us down, we raised about $17,000. Um, which for us, even though it's still a shoe screen budget, we're accomplishing what we intended to accomplish, which is using an FDM printer to print out some components that form a functioning firearm. Um, that might be a dangerous functioning firearm. That firearm might explode nine times out of ten, but that's what we're just we're fooling around with. You know, I mean, that's the point. And, uh, you know, it was said, I guess the best way that it was kind of communicated to me is you can't invent a bicycle in theory. You just kind of have to play with models around until one really works. And that's, that's what we're doing as well. I mean, we've got SolidWorks simulation and some other softwares, but really you can't build this thing in the software. It's just a bizarre kind of, like, what is a wiki weapon? I don't know. No one knows. Let's just build them and have other people send us designs and test them until we find things that work. Um, perhaps that's a little, a little bit too laissez-faire about guns, but let's Let's jump into some things here. I, I wanted to open with Thomas Paine's Intro to the Age of Reason. Um, not, that I'm, not that I favor English you know, uh, philosophers over anyone else, but I mean, I'm in the land of the Magna Carta here. So, Basically, Thomas Paine is saying, I've always 
protected other people's rights or defended other people's rights to have their own opinions, please grant me that right at least. Because when you when you prevent me from expressing my own opinion, you also entrap yourself. You enslave yourself against changing your opinion. Uh, and that's where I'll begin. So whether we agree, whether we disagree, I think it's important that this idea be expressed and be explored. And it's not human cloning. Um, but let's, let's start with those premises, please. Um, and I think that's the same point that's in Milton's Ariana Gittica, which is, which is the spiritual analog for the project that I held out on the website. Milton was saying, for truth to prevail, for there to be some ultimate good, for you to be a free moral agent, you must be able to engage with every idea. You must be able to explore or hear at least whatever can, is to be said, and that whatever that thing is, especially if it's controversial, because it's controversial, it must be protected, it must be seen, it must be engaged with. If that's all I ever represent, if that's all the project ever represents, then good. We want, we want the idea to be out there. So beyond that, I don't want to shoot through our project with any explanation. If you guys have questions, please you know, ask them uh, when, when it's question time about you know, the, the technicals of our project. But I want to get into why I said gun printing is a humanism. It's on the little uh, the program, gun printing is a humanism. Well, was my tongue in my cheek when I said that? I mean, a little bit, right? I'm trying to place myself in a little tradition here. You might, you might recognize the reference to Sarko. Basically, I'm saying that well, let me hold myself in opposition to some of our critics a lot. On our YouTube video, we have quite a few views, and on our, on our website, we have a lot of attention. A lot of people, when they oppose the project, they oppose it for normally a, a pretty narrow band of reasons uh, that are all related to each other. They say things like, you should obey the powers that be, uh, resistance is disruptive, stay in your own station, this is a terrible idea, why would you do this? Why would you have this idea? Unhave your idea, you know what I mean? These kinds of ideas. <laughs> and they say like, they say, uh, you know, this will unleash the dark side of humanity. I mean, it's totally, when, people, when these people say things like this, they believe in the project more than I do. You know, when they're saying, oh my God, you fucked the world, you know. Um, these people really believe that this is going to go somewhere crazy. Uh, all I'm saying, well, if I'm saying anything at all, is, is simply that, like, we believe in activism, optimism, responsibility, and universalism. The, these forces that are in opposition to us, claiming to have some kind of moral superiority, really are the forces of docility, obedience, authority, um, I don't know, what, futility even, you know, and, and, re and resignation. They say, well, well, don't do it for all of these reasons. I don't think those are healthy impulses, and I think ultimately our project, even if it's scary, even if, even if freedom comes across as something radical and unsafe and something that should be tamped down, that ultimate freedom underlines you as an individual actor, as a moral agent, and it says that there is a dignity in man, I and mean, humanism is just a metaphysical, you know, bullshit concept, probably. But I mean, still, if there's a dignity to being a man, if there's any truth to this enlightenment principle of of the integrity of the individual, then this is surely a project uh, that has some import for that concept. Now, I, I mean, I want to talk about later how I don't think the progress is concept driven. I think the, prog uh, the progress of, of humanity is tool driven now. I mean, we have 3D printers. That's what this whole controversy is built around. But if anything. This project, I hope, elevates some discussion or some importance about the human actor. Okay, I mean, it, it makes you important, whether guns are bad, guns are good, whatever. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to spend any more time than that defending the project. I mean, that's it. That's the defense, the only defense the project's ever going to get. I'm not going to, you know, hop on a plane and keep doing this. I mean, it's probably a one-time only show right here where I say to a, to a crowd, which is probably more apt than any other crowd, to at least receive the message I'm giving. We believe this is a good thing, and in the same vein, and in the same way that Bitcoin is a good thing, and I'm going to get into that right now, I want to talk about incapacitation. I have 14 minutes, good. Okay, incapacitation, all right? Decentralism as an incapacitator, all right? I mean, we've, I, I heard there was a really good talk this morning. What's his name? Sklar, did you guys, were you guys here for Sklar's talk? Right, I wasn't, but I mean, basically I heard that he was talking about the importance of peer-to-peer -peer uh, relating among individuals and, and how this basically obviates uh, certain kinds of state action. And that's what this project promises to be, or at least aspires to be. Um, I'm not using the word anarchism, I'm not doing it, but I do think decentralism and decentralist tendencies are the future. What was Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? Why do these things matter? It's because of their decentralist tendencies. How do you, how do you regulate a Bitcoin? How do you stop a Bitcoin? How do you filter a packet? You know, and that's the same thing with a gun. How do you stop a gun now? 
when a gun is communicated through the internet, when you can download the gun literally. And not just a CNC file, I mean, when you can click print, the non-expert can click print and print a gun and get that file from anywhere. It's, a, it's the same vein of decentralized tendencies. Where's the moral opprobrium appropriate because of, of that material object? Fine, but not in another object. And I said I wasn't going to defend anyone, so I mean, I'll move off of it, but I think if we can look forward, and that's all I want to do, I want to look forward. I, I think that's village economies, decentralized, independently networked communities are our future. I think this project is simply a, a kind of fundamental cornerstone uh, of that idea. It only represents, and, and sadly, it only represents it narrowly. It represents it with the form of a gun, right? Well, that's unfortunate in one way because it poisons the well with people. Uh, why do you want to print guns? You know, but I mean, look, you can print anything. That's the promise of 3D printing. We, I mean, can you blame us? We introduced this to people in a sensational way. It, it garnered some attention, and then it will probably allow us to accomplish our goal. But I think that's it. I want to talk about why. Hmm. I, I think we're okay. What does Bitcoin allow you to do? It's not. It doesn't have it, its own intention as a project. It's not. It isn't political. I would say it's just a protocol, right? And people can do with it what they will, and that's its beauty. But what does it literally allow you to do? And I come. You know, I'm, I'm from the U.S. or whatever. The, the U.S. is the world. You know, the, the dollar is the world's reserve currency, uh, in which we're all aware of. Right? Okay, so I'm on a plane right over here, and I hear when I get back that Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, says that they're going to go ahead with QE3, which is just a, I think they're going to buy mortgage-backed securities or whatever with, with dollars. Their balance sheet at the end of 2013 is going to be like four or five trillion dollars, and they're going to keep monetizing until they reach some threshold that they believe represents price stability or unemployment is at some level that whoever these planners are think is adequate. Okay, that monetization is the undermining of every single actor who holds dollars in the world. Okay, that monetization is, you know, I, I don't have to tell you guys this, you know this, this is why Bitcoin is important, because there's no way to monetize with Bitcoin. Bitcoin allows you to slip out of this legal tender regime bullshit. I mean, that's what it is, okay? And I know it doesn't have that intention, but that's what it allows. Whatever this hierarchy is that built itself up and said, okay, legal tender for debts, the dollar, and bank credit, these are money, and anyone else, any other kind of money you try to use is illegal. That regime can't speak and can't act in a world of Bitcoin. And I think this is why, ultimately, I was persuaded to come speak to you. Defense Distributed hopes to be the same kind of, or following the same kind of tradition. Okay, so a world government says, you know what? You can't have a gun. And let's, let's put aside our fictions about you know, democratic legitimacy or whatever, that well, a majority of people have spoken, and therefore, this is the will of all people. Uh, there are certain decisions, let's say, that groups can no longer have sway on, okay? I mean, now, well not now, but in the new term, guns will be completely available to people. That's just the promise of this project, and it doesn't matter. It allows you to slip out of these gun control regimes, and we're in a gun control regime right now, right? Is it good, is it bad? Would you feel good or bad? I mean, cultural tendencies or cultural attitudes will, will inform your opinion about things, right? But there's still something fundamentally sound about that ultimate right of a minority, and you know the ultimate minority is an individual. Um, to slip outside of these hierarchies, if they so choose. And that's, I, that's scary, I'm not saying it's not scary, okay? Uh, I'm gonna make one more jump here, right? Max Kaiser says that, I hope to meet him by the way, uh, he says that Bitcoin is the currency of resistance. I mean, you guys have all heard that. But I think that Bitcoin is resistance itself, and that's not, that's not just a, a stupid semantic kind of distinction. I mean, Gustav Landauer said the state is a condition. He said it's a certain relationship among human beings. It's a mode of behavior. Uh, when we begin to contract different kinds of relationships with each other, and this is what Bitcoin is, it's a way of peer-to-peer -peer interacting independently of its hierarchies uh, that have existed before. When, when we behave differently toward one another, what happens to the state? What room is there for the state when we begin to expand free spheres of action uh, in ways that are completely unanticipated? What happens? Do you need it? Does it even matter if you need it? You might still need it, but what happens? Uh, that's a question we're posing as well. Uh, and then Leone on representation. I talked about group decision making and kind of the end of group decision making. That might be somewhat wishful thinking on my part, but I mean, there's nothing sacrosanct about group decision making and representative democracy. 
Okay, I think what the future is decentralized action uh, and individual planning over central planning, like I've suggested. We have this opinion, I don't know, it's something in the West about, uh, you've heard of the Protestant ethic before, I think there's something religious about our attitudes towards group decision making and their legitimacy, and we say something like, well, you know, majority rule is holy. I mean, that's just kind of, it's this weird fiction that I think comes from Christianity or something from, you know, hundreds of years ago. I want to hold out a model, if I can, uh, to break that and say that it's just no longer, how to say this, Protestantism, right, Protestantism as an idea wasn't possible until there was a printing press, okay? And, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, all right? You can't have Protestantism, Martin Luther, and the further effects, Calvinism, Methodism, but you can't have this until you have a printing press. This tool allows people to completely invert um, ethical orders, all right? I mean, how, what am I trying to say? This, this probably sounds ridiculous, but think about the radical inversion of authority. Okay, you had a Bible, right? you've got a pyramid, right? Okay, God's at the top, you've got the, the priesthood and the lady and everybody, and it's knowledge was filtered. Okay, and there's, you know, there's one Bible per capita or whatever. No, there's not. But when you have the printing press, everyone's got a Bible in their hand and they have to think for themselves. And now you are, you're allowed this philosophy. You must determine what you're to make of this. You must. It, must, it is up to you to have this relationship with God and everything. And I know, you know we're in a kind of post-religious moment. I'm not coming at this from a religious perspective either. I'm just saying, think about how radical that was to those populations. The printing press forced you into an existential crisis. You're like, oh my God, it's up to me to determine what my relationship to the you know fucking deity is, or like the most important, it's probably the biggest single crash that humanity had with philosophy, and it was driven by this tool. And I think 3D printing, hate to, hate to say it, just because it's printer to printer, right? But the analogy's clear. I mean, when you have a self-replicating network material printers, they're gonna force humanity into similar inversions of authority, and this, I think, is the only thing that we represent as well. We're, we're hoping to make people ask themselves these similar questions. Well, you have the choice now, independently of someone else's will, what you will do. Will you have a gun? Will you not have a gun? It is up to you to determine, independently of any kind of central planner's wishes, pie in the sky kind of <coughs> attitudes. It's that big. I think it's, I think literally, we represent something in the same vein as Bitcoin or going in the same direction as, of Bitcoin toward a decentralist future. And I guess you could say an individualist anarchist future as well. Perhaps that's scary, perhaps it's not, but it will be up to you to make something out of it, because no one else can anymore. And that's it. That's what I have to say. I think you can turn it down a little. Um, can somebody turn the audio down a little? Okay, maybe later. Um, next speaker, well, not off. <laughs> um, next speaker is Yuri Matilla. I hope I pronounced the name right, but it was probably wrong. So if you're here, it's you? Okay. Um, you have like, just, can we just make a really quick two minute break or something? Uh, so, if you're allowed to set up. I just thought.